And we are okay. rolling. Okay, we're rolling. <laughs> um, there's a song about that. Um, right, what I'm here doing is um, I've learned over the years, and actually one of the first things Christine and I did when we were married was go harvest some uh, balsam poplar. This is balsam poplar, um, and these are the buds. And that's what we were looking for to make a salve. And it has resins on it. And um, sometimes it even has little drops. There's a drop. It's squeezing right out. And you put it in olive oil or coconut oil or bear grease or any carrier that you feel good putting my, on your skin. And uh, you let it soak for about six weeks. Maybe keep it warm. Some people do it with added heat, but you don't really need to, is my understanding. And then you squeeze it out, and you got this um, amazing medicinal salve. Though it helps actually in oil, but it, it would help to add beeswax. Now, interestingly, the bees are the ones that come for this little resin there, and um, they use it to make propolis, which keeps their hives together. Mmm, nice chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> so now is the time. You can even see that, you know, compared to that one, this one's a bit wider. They're starting to open. And sometimes they're really small, but mostly I'm going for the larger ones. And eventually you end up with something like, like these. Now this, this, um, one side of the uh, beeswax, which we hope to be uh, making a, um, a film of to show how we do it. Um, we can use it on, on sore knees, on sore toes, sore neck. I, yeah, my neck loves it. Shoulders too. And uh, smells wonderful. Yeah. And you only get that smell really once a year. What a treat. Nature is just full of so many treats, surprises, and bird songs. So, to get this far, and and yeah, we'll put it on a website uh, or some mode of commun communication um, how we uh, uh, how traditionally um, herbalists and and uh, peoples people living in this area. And that's pretty much the whole northeastern woodlands that um, would come to the trees. And you go, oh, wow, gee, my toe's a little sore. Maybe I'll take a little bit of this tree. Or my throat's sore. I'll go to the pines or the other evergreens. Um, so, or actually the one I'd really like to try this year is, is to be harvesting some... Uh, black cherry bark, inner bark of black cherry, and you, you make a tea out of it by pouring, you can dry it, crush it, or grate it if, when it's tender, and um, supposedly it's really good for singer's voice. I need to try that soon, do a bit, and it's good for so many other things. We'll, we'll get that information out too. Um, let's see. So to do so, and what we have here is now a tree stump. This is balsam poplar that, you know, this morning was just standing way up there, higher than any of these other trees. And it was split just above that point. And it was so high that this garden, which is right over here, you can even see the shadow on some of it now, but that's more because of the cider barn up there on the left. So we, um, it shades it, and, and so it, if it shades it now, and now is like, uh, what are we at? April something like 11? I'll take your word for it. <laughs> or take my memory for it, or I'm jumping things. I don't know which. But uh, it's, okay, thank you. Seven, seven I like. It shades the garden, and that means that in September, so you go to solstice, how many days before solstice, which is the highest the sun gets, uh, to where it is now, which is, again, early April, and you go back so many days, 
So that's 20 and 21, no, 30. 31, so 43, 74 days, and you go from there the other way, and you come up in September. And so to remove some of the shade, <laughs> to remove some of the shade, um, we're ta taking this tree down, and we've asked it for, to be giving it all its healing medicinal qualities. And usually I, I would offer tobacco that uh, grows in this garden, but in this case what I've done is I've... Um, it was, it, the timing didn't work out for me to go get some tobacco. So what I did is I had in my pocket one of my most favorite things, which uh, felt worthy to share, and that was um, unsweetened chacosol um, rawness. And I gave a chunk of that to the, to, because uh, it you know, has value for me. So I wanted to uh, share something. And then Tim kindly cleared the way. So that actually what we have now, is you can see where it's gone down that way toward the pond and that's a whole other world I'd love to introduce you to it but um, I had to clear a couple trees out of the way so that it would land clean and not damage the other ones that are still here did a very nice job of it and so I've started cutting off the bottom branches and then bringing up the pieces to um, uh, up to here so we can harvest them easier because standing in the snow or on a slippery slope or working with uh, um, Here we can come down a little further <laughs> Ah, bird song, yes So this here is the black cherry I was talking about um, Lovely uh, pale you can see the color, and it's like a, an orange and a brown. And that brown makes really beautiful furniture. And I'm sure lots of other things. And uh, you can see where I've been cutting off the branches and then working my way down and clearing other trees, small ones that were there. So in, by doing two things, we're doing at least two things, which includes opening, taking the shade away from the garden over there, and then the other one being to um, uh, open up a path that we now can more easily get from the garden down to the pond. I don't know if you can see the color on that tree over there. That's a, that's a willow tree. And... Um, I think it's a gold willow, but I won't stand on it because I can't stand on it. It's too high to try to do that. But um, it was about yay size. So that's about yay size. Um, and about this tall, sharpened on one end, and I drove it in the ground. And this was a stick that I'd gotten from Joe Reeve at uh, the Golden Bough Tree Nursery. And um, now it, look how tall it's grown. You know, from being like four feet, now it's it's a good tight, and it's always so bright and golden looking, especially in spring. You can sort of see the seasons changing when it changes color. And that's before the leaves come out and all the uh, catkins. So, yes, new. So my next job would be cutting more of these. I don't know, uh, can you think I can do that while... Uh, why not? Why not? Hey, life is good. Let's keep proceeding with it. I'm on your side, life. So, what we have here is a branch that's like, whoa, oh, let's guess three inches, two and a half, three inches, and it's going out um, that way toward the um, maples. No, that was, that was definitely maple, and that one I'm not so sure of. That could be a cherry, black cherry again. Very healthy looking one too, lovely. So what I find easiest to do is because I'm downhill and my collection place and workplace is uphill. I mean, I could reverse, but it's kind of moist down there. So what I'd like to do is to cut this off, but I'd like to cut it here and then work up. And always when cutting something that's with the gravity going out, 
I have to cut underneath for a few strokes until you feel it's a little challenging and then cut above it. A lot safer that way. See, it's a pretty two cuts met. And again, you can see the heartwood and the sapwood. A relatively fast growing tree. And it smells, oh, it's a unique smell. I really love it. So next would be, well, at this point I could just take this whole branch up. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put it over here and I'll make it do that a couple times and uh, thereby have a bunch of bigger ones I can carry up and instead of doing them all at once, I mean one at a time. <laughs> so this one's kind of interesting. It, it still makes sense to take it off here, uh, but then I'll move it up and cut off pieces of it and make a pile of them. And um, yeah, and this is a really amazing uh, saw blade. It's from uh, Lee Valley in Ottawa. I've tried a few, and I really like them when they make and sell. And uh, has a nice holster, so I know where it is, and it grips it. You know, so I can turn it upside down; doesn't go anywhere on me. Then from here, it would I think be easier with a lopper. So now lopper. That's a little more challenging. See if I can reach a lopper. Loppers are a wonderful tool. I'm trying to do it close to the uh, to the main section because this is a good firewood, if nothing else, um, and it's easier to deal with firewood if if you actually take it off and don't leave stubs sticking out. I mean, stubs are natural too. Like there's a stub, and I could cut that off, but I think a bigger saw could do that easier. Um, hmm. I don't know. Might as well take you off. Okay. See, all the weight from this one was on there, so it just could cut it straight down. And it wouldn't get bound up. Now this is easier to pull. I guess I could just bring it like that. Why do the extra work twice? Okay, so how are we doing? Yeah, I think you got a good pass there, do you? No, I want to go either that way and over or that way through the middle. This is a big, yeah, the, the outer one I think would be better. It's a big branch. And you're gonna stay there? Oh, I don't know. Let's put you over here where you're a little safer. I don't want you to get hurt. You're my friend. <laughs> it is very well known, or at least my experience has been, it's a brittle wood. I mean, it's just amazing how easily something like that can break. It, it is popular. And it's, uh, I forget whether it's as hard as or softer or whatever. Aha, I got a tangle down there, but maybe I can pull it through. Yeah, no problem. Just wears me where you're. Good enough for the moment. 
Let's see if I walk this way. Ah, there we go. Whew. Broke some pieces over there, but uh, we can deal with that. So actually, I think pulling up those other ones would be good now. And then bring up the lopper to um, take off some of these easier. What I'm aiming to do is to gather enough of these to uh, put in a truck and then bring inside the barn. Because here tell that it's going to rain. Now that may be uh, private information, but I don't know. 